Hi everyone! The topic of our presentation is the frog respiratory system. Frog is a type of amphibian. It can live on land and in water. Because of this, it has three respiratory surfaces on its body so that it can breathe in water and on land. The first one is the skin. Gaseous exchange through the skin is called cutaneous respiration. The second one is the lungs. Gaseous exchange through the lungs is called pulmonary respiration. The third one is on the lining of the mouth. This type of respiration is called buccopharyngeal respiration. This respiration occurs when the frog's mouth is not submerged completely in water. Today, we will just explain the gaseous exchange through the skin and the lungs. First, I will explain the respiratory structure of the skin. There are three main characteristics that enable the skin to be the main respiratory organ of frogs. The first one is the skin is thin and highly permeable to respiratory gases. This enables a rapid and efficient gaseous exchange between the skin and the air. The second one is the frog skin is constantly moist. There are two ways for the frog to maintain the moisture of the skin. The first one is the frog always be in water or burrow in damp soil. The second one is the glands with secret mucus on the surface of the skin. This happens when the frog is on dry land. The third one is the frog skin is richly supplied with network of blood capillaries. This blood capillaries located beneath the frog skin. Its function is to transport the respiratory gases to and from all the body cells. Gaseous exchange through the skin is called cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous respiration can happen in water and also on land. This is because the frog can keep its skin moist with two ways which I mentioned just now. Cutaneous respiration also allows the frog to stay in water for a long time because it cannot use lungs to breathe in water. Cutaneous respiration is 2.5 times faster than pulmonary respiration because there is no specific movement needed for this respiration. Next, I would like to explain the process of cutaneous respiration. First, oxygen in the air or water will dissolve in the moisture of the skin. Then, oxygen diffuses into the blood capillaries beneath the skin. After that, Carbon dioxide diffuses out from the blood into the surrounding. Last, the blood will transfer the oxygen to all parts of body. Now I'm going to talk about the frog respiratory structure, lungs. Lungs are a pair of thin wall, oval, hollow, soft and spongy elastic sacs connected to the mouth through an opening called glottis. It is situated in the anterior part of body cavity on each side of the heart. Wall of lung is made up of three layers and is pink color structure. Besides, the surface area for a gaseous exchange in the lungs is increased by the presence of numerous inner partitions. The membrane of the lungs are thin and moist to facilitate the efficient or diffusion of respiratory gases in and out rapidly. 
Lastly, the lungs are supplied with a rich network of blood capillaries to transport the respiratory gases to the body cells. The respiration through the lungs is called pulmonary respiration. Once mature, frogs lose their gills and are able to bring oxygen into their bodies through lungs. When do a frog breathe through lungs? Frog respires through lungs when it lives on land. They only breathe through lungs when necessary because they are lack of diaphragm to help regulate the pressure in their lungs. Frogs must use their throats, nostrils, and mouths together to bring in and expel gases. Frogs rely on their lungs to breathe when they are active and need more oxygen than the skin respiration alone can provide. Like they are swimming in the water, during leaping, and jumping. Next, let me talk about pulmonary respiration of frog. Pulmonary respiration can be also known as lungs respiration. It can be divided into two parts, that is pulmonary inspiration and pulmonary expiration. So what is pulmonary inspiration? It is the inhalation of air from the atmosphere into the lungs. Next, pulmonary aspiration is a process of removing air from the lungs to outside. It is also the exhalation or giving out of carbon dioxide from lungs back to the buncopharyngeal cavity through glottis and to outside. Now, let us look at the mechanism of inhalation of frogs. Firstly, the air is inhaled through the nostrils of frogs. The mouth and glottis are closed and the floor of the buccopharyngeal cavity is lowered. This is to increase the volume of the buccopharyngeal cavity. We know that when the volume increases, the pressure of the air will decrease. So, when the pressure of the air inside the cavity decreases, the air in the atmosphere, which is higher, will rushes into the cavity through the external nerves. After that, the nostrils are closed. Then, the floor of the buccopharyngeal cavity is raised again. At this moment, the volume decreases and the air pressure inside the cavity become higher. Therefore, the air will rushes into the lungs of the frog after the glottis is open. Now, let's turn to the mechanism of exhalation of frogs. In the initial stage, the lungs and abdominal muscles will contract. Secondly, the volume of lungs will decrease. Thus, the pressure in the lungs will increase. Before the air rushes from lungs into cavity through glottis, the flow of buccopharyngeal cavity will lower to increase the volume of cavity. Next, the external nerves is open, then followed by the volume of buccopharyngeal cavity is decreased. At the same time, the area inside the cavity will decrease and the pressure of air increase. Lastly, the glottis will close and air rushes outside through the external nerves.